All right, we're gonna talk about domain and range. Okay, that's something you've done a lot before, but so just a little refresher here. All right, so the domain's the set of all x values that are defined within a function. So basically any x you're allowed to plug in that doesn't make the function either undefined or imaginary. Those are all the, the, all the x's in the domain. All right, and then the range is the set of all y values that are produced after you substitute the entire domain in. So basically any y values you could get by plugging in any x value from the domain. So a little simple example here. This is my function. It's in mapping form. Okay, and we'd say our domain are any of these x values that are going somewhere, that are allowed to be plugged in. So the way we write this out is we draw a little brace like this and then we just list them out. So one, two, three, and four are all in our domain. Okay, and then we do a similar thing for the range, but Take a look at what's happening here. So if I plug in 1 into my function, I get 6. If I plug in 2, I get 8. If I plug in 3, I get 5. And if I plug in 4, I get 6. Okay, so remember the range is only the y values that will be produced by plugging in x values from the domain. So even though 5, 6, 7, and 8 are all listed here, 7 does not have any x value pointing to it. So 7 is actually not part of our range because there's no x value that produces that value. So only 5, 6, and 8 would be in our range. All right, so let's take a look at a graphical representation. This would be another type of function. Okay, and what I want you to do on a graph is imagine like this whole thing being smashed down so it's just on, a sh on the x-axis. Okay, for domain, and if we're talking about range, we want to smash it down so it's on top of the y-axis. All right, let's do domain first. So imagine just smashing this all down so it's just right here on top. So like this, if I smashed it down, would be right here. All right, then everything kind of in between, and then I smash it down, and this point is the farthest point away. So it'd be right here. So basically, that function covers this part of the x-axis. So that's what we want to describe in our domain, all numbers between here and here. All right, so that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, that's negative 7, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, that's 9. All right, so all numbers between negative 7 and 9. So if we do interval notation, we just do negative 7, comma, 9, and since they're open circles, we put parentheses. Or if you want to do inequality notation, negative 7 is less than x, which is less than 9. All right, so let's do the same thing for the range. All right, except this time I want to smash it down on top of the y-axis. Okay, so smash it down and like looks like this point's going to be kind of the highest point right here. All right, and then all this stuff in the middle, and then this point is going to smash down right here. All right, then this all covers all the space between. All right, so this is what you want to describe for the range. All right, so let's go down here first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That looks like negative nine. Then one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, um, you always want to start with the smallest number, just like we did for the domain. So start at the bottom, negative nine to six. So that'd be negative nine comma six. Since uh, negative 9 is an open circle, that's parentheses, but 6 is a closed circle, so that'd be a square bracket right there. Or if you want to do inequality notation, you can do negative 9 is less than x. Closed circle, you're going to do less than or equal to 6. All right, you can pretty much use that strategy for all domains and ranges. All right, another thing I want to talk about is increasing and decreasing. So increasing you and decreasing, you read it from left to right, just like you read a book. And if it's going down, decreasing, it's going up, it's increasing. Okay, so from here to here, all right, and that range of values is where it's decreasing, it's going down. Okay, then starting from here all the way to here, it's increasing. Let's put a little increasing and decreasing. And then from here to here, it's decreasing again. 
So the acid fine increasing and decreasing. Okay, um, decreasing has got two separate parts. So you would describe that. You'd list them all out. I'm going to use interval notation. So I'm going to go from negative 7 to negative 2. All right, and negative 2 is a closed circle. So a square bracket. Then you're going to say we're going to union that with, um, looks like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 to 9. All right, and then it's increasing from 2, basically a negative 2 to 5, kind of in between that area. So we can do negative 2, comma, 5. All right, last thing we need to talk about here, positive and negative. Okay, positive is where it's above the x-axis, so that's where the y values are positive, and negative is where it's below the x-axis, so where the y values are negative. All right, so you may want to write here y values, just to remind yourself. All right, so this is uh, positive from here to here. Then it's uh, negative from here all the way back to here. Positive again from here to here and here, and then negative from here below. Okay, so let's uh, see here. We've got... positive and then down here we've got negative and then here again we've got here to here positive and then from here to the end negative all right, so both uh, types have two disjoint sets here. So we're positive from negative 7 to negative 4.5. Negative 7 to negative 4.5. All right, I'm going to put an open circle. Um, I'm going to put a parenthesis there. I should have put an open circle here because um, when, it's, when it's on the x-axis, that's 0. That's neither positive nor negative. Okay, so it's going to be an open circle because that, that number won't really be either positive or negative. All right, then we're positive again from 0 to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.5. So union that with 0 to 6.5. All right, you're basically always going to use parentheses because those numbers on the endpoints are never are either positive or negative. All right, and then we're negative from negative 4.5 to 0. And we'll union that with 6.5 to 9. And that'll be it. All right, let's take a look at our real function here. Um, you recognize this is a quadratic, it's a parabola. All right, we can do all the same stuff with this. So uh, let's start out with domain and range. All right, so imagine this kind of scrunching down onto the x-axis here. Okay, so this, and we don't really have endpoints, we have these arrows. But if I scrunched it down, basically that means it's going to just keep on going like this. All right, and that arrow is going to go here. And then this arrow is going to scrunch down over here, and it's just going to go like this. All right, and there's no like spaces or holes in between. So domain in this case is negative infinity to positive infinity. That's what the arrows go to. Okay, or you can say all real numbers. All right, the range, however, doesn't cover all real numbers. Okay, you notice that if we scrunch this down onto the y-axis, we do have a lowest point right here, and then the arrows go up from there. So that points at negative 1. So it goes from negative 1 up to infinity. And it should put a square bracket there because that is included. It is a closed circle. Okay, Or we can write y is greater than or equal to negative 1. All right, um, increasing versus decreasing. Okay, so again, left to right. 
Okay, so this is decreasing from basically an arrow, negative infinity, all the way up to right here. That's decreasing. And then from right here on and then to the arrow, it keeps on going, that's increasing. Okay, so we can say it's decreasing from negative infinity. All right, then what's our x value here? One, two, three. So this is at three. So from negative infinity, parentheses there, to three. And then it's increasing from three to positive infinity. All right, and then positive versus negative. All right, so it's positive from basically negative infinity to here. So we can do a little arrow over to this point, which is at 2. And then it goes negative, but then right here it starts positive again. So that's at now 4, and then it keeps being positive. It goes on to infinity. So it's positive from negative infinity to 2. Then remember, 2 is not positive or negative, so make sure to use a parentheses there. And then we'll union that with, and it's again 4 to positive infinity. Then the only place where it's negative is in between the 2 and the 4. And we're going to use parentheses on both ends there because neither 2 or 4 are positive or negative. They're both 0. The y value is 0 there. All right, so that's how we would describe that. All right, let's take a look at something like this. Uh, domain and range. All right, so this one, we've got a lot of arrows here, but we do also have these kind of dotted lines, these asymptotes that are kind of blocking us off. So if we go on the x-axis, we've got this arrow to start things off, going from negative infinity. And it goes all the way up here, and then it doesn't quite touch this. So that's like kind of like an open circle right there. But then it starts right back up again. So again, we can like shade, shade, shade. But again, it doesn't quite touch this. It's never going to do that. All right, and then again, we start right up here, and eventually we get to this arrow down here. So it's almost like it's all real numbers, because it's negative infinity to positive infinity, except for that you got these two numbers in the middle here. Okay, so the way that you write this out, you say it's negative infinity to, what number is this? Negative one, two, three, four, negative five. And that's going to be a parentheses, because it's an open circle, and then you union that with, then we go from negative five over to, looks like positive two. Again, parentheses, because we're not actually touching those points. And then we union that with two to infinity. So kind of a pain in the butt to do it in interval notation there, because you have three separate intervals you have to describe. All right, the easy way that you can do it is just say x cannot equal negative five or two. And that implies that x can equal any other number, which is true. It's all real numbers except for negative 5 and 2. All right, now the range. Okay, again, we're going to just kind of scrunch this down on the y-axis. Start at the bottom here. It looks like we start with an arrow going down to the bottom. And it covers basically all this stuff up to here, except for it's not allowed to touch that axis right there. So... Except for there, and then it starts right back up again and continues going forever. All right, so this one we'd say it goes from negative infinity up to zero. That's the x-axis. And then we'll union that with zero to positive infinity. All right, again, that one also has an easier way to write it. You just say y cannot equal zero, implying it can equal any other number. 